So we're in my greenhouse. This is Blake's Nature Life. And I wanted to show you some of my plants. And I wanted to show you, I kind of moved some plants around. You can see how they're doing. Some are a little stressed out from the low temps we had a few weeks back. and They're going to be all right. You can see there's my uh, jackfruit. I've been moving the limbs around to make uh, it kind of stay low. And then when I leaned it over with using a bamboo stick, it shot off this main this main stem so I'll end up pulling it over and we'll figure out something with it so we have some avocado from seed that I'll graft onto we have the casserole plant that I'll let it grow up in here right behind it we have tamarind from seed from fruit and spice park this was a sweet tamarind right here and it's growing it's growing in a pot that grew through the ground so I might just leave it in the pot and keep it a smaller tree. Here we have some fennel growing. We have yucca. I should have did a video on it, how I planted it. Pretty much all you do is just take cuttings, stick it straight in the ground, and it will grow up. And I have one yucca planted right in the ground. These were given to me from David, and I have one in a pot that I'm gonna move or plant somewhere else. Here's another tamarind, little tamarind tree. Here's a Spanish lime. It's in the family of the lychees and all. I grew up from Sadie, came from the Bahamas. We got some uh, aloes in the back. Here's a white sapote uh, from uh, a nursery that I'm going to plant on the property. Keeping it in here for uh, until I find a spot. That way I'll start putting off new growth, get a little taller. Here's our papaya. Got a nice little papaya on it, a little, little circle one doing pretty good he's growing in a pot it's doing well happy with it right behind it we have some cuttings from the coral bush and I have a lot of the little cuttings growing here's the parent plants I grew from seed and they haven't really been big on the the cooler temps in here they're really tropical too but all these plants will come back nothing to worry about we even have some Christmas palms growing from seed they're doing well in the pot. And then right behind it, we have Bridal, bridal 2K. Uh, sometimes I can't say my words right. So it's a, I'm going to call it a bridal plant. It's the top of, uh, now, you know, sometimes you just, you have so many plant names that I have to look at the name. But no, it's a Bridal 2K, Pute, Tongue Twister. Okay, so right behind it, we have uh, Sapodilla from Seed. Or some people in Spanish, when well Spanish it's called uh, Nispeto. And it has a really, it's like a cinnamon flavor fruit. Gritty like a pear, really tasty. Growing the seeds to uh, graft onto. So here's a bigger bridal plant. I'm going to call it bridal plant. This is why they call it that because it has these beautiful flowers on it. Isn't that gorgeous? I had a little bit of a. Uh, issue with fungus and with the cooler temps it makes the leaves fall off they don't like it here's another jackfruit grown from seed some of these I will graft and this one's actually planted straight in the ground we got different vining plants here's a you like this this is the cuttings from the the passion vine that I grew from seed it's doing pretty good here's a chili congo behind me or behind the the vines and I tried to graft another type of chili congo that I grew that had bigger fruits. And I think some may have took. We'll find out. It's still green. It has nice little cherries, little nice little little chilies. You may have seen them in other older vid videos. And then we have a monsteria cutting that I planted straight in the ground. And I want it to grow up in the greenhouse. I'll keep it maybe three to two foot tall. I'll keep taking cuttings off of it. Then we have a longan from seed. It's a tasty fruit. Uh, the fruit has a darker skin to it and you open it up and it has a almost grape-like texture with a nice seed inside of it. Here's another sapodilla. I'm gonna grow it. It's stressed out because it was in the ground. I dug it up. It's coming back. Right below it is a cucumber tree or they call it Bimbi in India. 
and in Spanish they call it mimbre. I have sometimes called it the wrong thing, mimbre. A mimbre means something else in Spanish. It just it's related to star fruit, and it's kind of stressed out because they don't like the full sun. The full sun's been coming on this corner, but it is putting in new leaves, so these older leaves will drop. And also, it does not like the cool weather. Now, its cousin, the star fruit, can handle a little bit of more cooler temperatures. So it's doing good from seed. I will graft it. And right beside it, we have Mame. Now, Mame, this one's in the ground. It's actually doing good. It has a little discolor on the top leaves, but, you know, it's going to do fine. And this one I also will graft just to have some fun. And right beside it, we have an avocado tree, the Florida one. And I have grafted two different varieties on it. One came from my mother-in-law on them's tree. And then one came from my friend's tree that has these big old avocados. And we'll see which one takes. If it doesn't take, we just cut it back and I'll put off new shoots. I was using Pyrofilm and when I get better at grafting, I will do a video on it. Here's a fire bush with a butterfly. These came from seed from a big fire bush tree down south. And my parents, uh, Marjorie's parents, my girlfriend's parents, backyard. Uh, right behind it, we have a cinnamon apple. I tried to graph one, but it did not take. And these, these are tropical. They're in the Mame family. And they taste really delicious, like a, almost like a cashew in a fruit flavor. And these, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with them, but we'll do something with them. Then we have a, a papaya that I have in here that came from Nicaragua that was, I swear it was gigantic. It was at least a foot long or two foot long. The big fruit fed the whole family. Here's a uh, mango from seed that I, I grafted onto. from I took scion wood from her, uh, my girlfriend's mom and dad's tree in their backyard. And it looks like some may be taken out. I mean, I mean, some might be actually sprouting out, if you can see. Give me a moment. So I think this one is a possibility that it has took, but we will see. It's better to grab them when you have warmer temperatures, and the temperatures have fluctuated through my greenhouse, so we will see what happens. Fingers crossed. Now this is in the Nona family. It's related to the soursop, but the fruit was like a cherimoya. And it looked like a cherimoya, but I think it's mixed with maybe a sugar apple because the way the leaves are, cherimoyas have more circle, circular leaves, and soursops have the oval short leaves. So we'll see what this turns into. I'll do my research. It came from Nicaragua. It's doing really good. And here's my soursop. He sees as not. He is not. She has not liked all this cooler weather. But she's going to come back. They'll drop some of the leaves. And you can see it's already pushing out new leaflets. Because these soursops, they don't like it when it gets 50 to 40. And 40, they straight up defoliate their whole leaves. And that really stresses the plant out. So that's why I keep this one in the greenhouse. Let's walk, our, let's walk around. So I got a lot of seeds from down south. So I'm always grabbing avocado seeds, the big green ones. The big old seed does really good for rootstock. You just have to cover the rootstock because it's really tropical, but it also can handle a lot of diseases. So I have a lot of them. I even planted with them egg fruits that uh, tasted really good from the fruit and spice part that I want to grow from seed. And they're usually true to seed. Um, I have some guavas. I have some sour oranges growing. I love the sour orange. We even have some elderberry right in here in the back that I grew from seed that I have to uh, have to divide. And here's some more of them anona plants. Then we have some sour sops that are kind of stressed out. That were, that were these large sour sops that we had in Nicaragua. And here's the cherimoya. This is the difference of cherimoya. See how circle the leaves are? And these are cold hardy, hardier than you know sour sop. And the list goes on with the different species. Here's uh, here's my Aquatica money tree plant that I did a cutting from the big one 
Wait, wait, wait till you see this. Look how big my my money tree is. This one's from Central America. And you see I've had to cut it so many times because it's it keeps touching the greenhouse. And these have a beautiful flower in this big old seed pod. And they have really big seeds compared to the ones you see at the store. They're related, but they're different. They've been the other ones have been more cultivated. This one's the native one. You see in wetland or on islands that are just surrounded by water but they have a this one had a seed this big and it was floating in the water and so the seeds drop in the water and they find new locations to grow and they do good from cuttings and i really like them so here's some other seeds that i grabbed i grabbed some of these from david I, it's supposedly native to down south they have these clusters of seed pods and I'm still trying to look up what it was called and I don't know what it's called so I just called it seed pod and drew a, a pot on it. Behind it we have a Kentuck, Kentuck seeds that I got from my friend down south. Then we have Gumbo Limbo tree, supposedly native down south and in other countries. They use the bark to help rash and poison you get on your skin and insect bites. And here's another one. I'm not sure if this is a one that popped up from the seed, I'm gonna wait till I pull it up just to be safe. You see I have a lot of sticky traps because of uh, fungus gnats. And then I have a little cutting of a um, Persian lime. It keeps on wanting to put off flowers, so I have to keep pinching flowers off. So I'm pretty sure it took and eventually it'll put off leaves. And right beside it, we have different trees that I do not know what they're called that I got from uh, Animal Kingdom and Disney World. It looks like something's been chewing on the plants. So, yeah, there's always some type of insect that gets in here that likes to munch on my beautiful plants. So this one really likes the tropics, and this one's more of a uh, an African one. So this one you find in Central America. Can't remember the name of it, but it has a seed pod they make soap out of. And this one just is real thorny, and they use it to protect their villages from the wildlife. I gotta figure out what's going on. It might have because it got hit by the cold. It's dropping a lot of its leaves. We'll find out. But it seems pretty stressed out. This one in the back is doing a lot better. Just gotta be careful with it. I don't want it to die. We have some other cool plants that did from cuttings. Right here, another money tree. And then in the back, we did some kapok tree cuttings. And then we have a Lucucci tree. You've probably seen in my last video, the fruit and spice part. I got it growing in a pot that's growing straight in the ground now. And it has a little small fruit on it related to jackfruit and all. Then we have another coral bush. It's doing good in a pot. We got some plans for these. Some of these I'll plant out in the yard around the house to keep it thermal hot, keep it hot so it don't die in the winter. Then we have a mahogany tree. It definitely does not like it under 50 or 40. See the leaves changing, you know. Look, got even got burnt from the weather. And then we have another Lucucci. We have a lot of mames from seed because I want to graft onto them. And we have another Mimbade or the cucumber Bimbi. It's a lot bigger. It's doing good. It, uh, and then we have a soursop in the back from seed. A little orchid growing better in here and then we have little baby sour sobs that I sell and there's some other ones and oh these are the acai I need to do a separate video on it acai find one in here gave one to John so he could plant the ground in his greenhouse oh here's my big old monsteria plant that I've been taking cuttings off of Here's a big sour orange tree. Here's one of my um, my star fruit that I'm on graft. He was a little stressed out. He was being attacked by an insect. So I have to keep spraying him. He'll come back, but I do want to graft him. Graft her, he, she, whatever. I like to call him him, hers. And then we have another monsteria that I... I did a cutting from. You always gotta cut them when they have a little root on it. 
Then we have some more mames back there, and we even have a little coffee plant growing. You can see it. This sour salt's gonna be fine. You can see how big this chunk is. It's doing pretty good. This is a long time ago where I cut it because it had boring insects trying to kill it. I had to cut it back, and it came back. Hoping this will make fruit in a few years. That's what I got growing right now. Just in the greenhouse. A lot of these I'll I'll move around, sell some, plant them out there near the tree. So let's take a look outside at what I got trying to grow for now. So now we're outside, we're gonna look at the jackfruit. You can see some are stressed out more than others. Some seem to have a stronger resistance to the cold. This bigger one's actually doing really good. See how big it is? And these will come back. They'll be fine. Trying to see which ones are tough. And I will graph some of these. And we have some Moringa. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of Moringa. Tastes really good. Has a very high source of protein. Really good for surviving. Gives you food. And has many purposes for the whole plant. So I got this one in the ground. Got a few, another one in the ground. And I have some from cuttings these I grew from seed and then the rest of these are jackfruits then we have lemongrass outside it's not doing bad and then we have another moringa I planted I gotta cut this one so it grows straight better it's already putting off new uh, leaves and then behind it we have kapok tree I grew from seed about a year ago and this one's doing a lot better than this one that's in the ground. This one got hit hard on the top from the weather. But it also was in the greenhouse for a while, so I can understand. It got burnt and the weather hit it. And then the bottom part did fine. And you check out their their spikes. This is what I like about Kapok trees. And I saw a large one in Nicaragua. The history about Kapok trees, they're protected in Central America and in, in the upper parts of Mexico because the natives, they believe that the tree would be a gateway to the other world. And you see these trees everywhere and they're such, they get really large. They get three times wider than this tree, probably four times wider. And they have such beautiful structures and they have a lot of benefits. People use the seed pods because the seed pods have like cotton in it and they use it for pillows and so on. And I believe you can use the seeds when you squish them, they have a lot of oil, 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 oil content. Hard to say. All right, so let's move on. We have a sapodilla, sapodilla mint. I grew from seed and you can see how stressed out it is from sun damage to weather been in my greenhouse for so long and then I have one that's been outside and it's done way better it's done much better because it was more used to in the environment but this will come back and I will graft onto it let's keep moving over I have some yucca a lot of people will call this yucca this is yucca and this species of plant are way different yucca you eat yucca you grow as a plant you do cuttings from it and they're in they're in a different family Got a lot of cuttings of plants. I have a little M, M tree that I grew from a root cutting. These do good if you cut a piece off the root, leave a tip up. I'll show you one that I did. Gotta remember where it's at. I'll find it. I did some air layers of the lychee. Remember a while back. Here's my lychee tree doing really good. And below it, we have a strawberry tree has these fruits I don't have much flavor it just looks like a strawberry so they call it strawberry we have a El uh, mulberry from air Lair. it's coming back then we have some uh, some goji berry from uh, from roots from roots that it has multiplied by and I have divided them and I'm gonna plant these in the ground and then we have a, uh, a strawberry from seed doing good makes these little small skinny strawberries we have different palms we have I can't remember the name of this plant I had the name down but I 
brain fart right now. Then, it's like I'm getting bit by tons of fire ants. That's why you have to be careful walking around. Yep, let me turn this off real quick. We are back after I have been bit up by these fire ants. I really appreciate you biting my feet up. Must have got bit about 30 times. I was like, what is, why am I having pain on my foot? I'm good, they bit through my sock. Why you should wear shoes, pay attention. All right, let's keep going. We have a, uh, this is a cool one. This is a, uh, it is a dragon fruit dragon cactus that I grew from seed about four years ago and this one has went through so many cold weathers in the past it has died it has came back it has died and now it seems to be pretty cold hardy so this might would make a good rootstock for different dragon fruit plants and you can see look how it's growing up the tree and we had some fire ant issues as you just seen biting me up they were eating holes out of it and I kept spraying it, spraying it, and finally was able to stop it. You have to cut off the spots they're eating on because they leave a scent trail. And then, look, it's making a new little bud. So when these, when these branches grow outwards and hang, they might start producing flowers. Very happy with this one. We have a uh, red bud tree. I'm going to plant here for them. We have a uh, magno uh, magnolia tree I, I grew. We got some more lemongrass, it's doing good. And you see the weather hit this banana dwarf banana tree. We have a uh, pawpaw that I'm gonna graft on too. Then we have some, uh, you know this one, rosemary, it smells so good. And we have a big mulberry tree behind it that I've done a lot of air layers on. It's growing through the pot. I haven't decided if I'm gonna dig it up and do something with it. And behind it we have a we have an Egyptian spinach. Don't think it's related to spinach. It looks more related to dandelions the way the flowers are. But the flowers smell like a they smell like a dirty belly button. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm smelling a bit my belly button. I'm just saying it stinks. The flower does not smell good, it smells moldy. Oh my gosh. I don't know why, well, I guess it's, it attracts flies or something. But it tastes really good. I, I can't say it smells like a, it just smells, it has a, it has a sweet, but a, another just, not a, not a, not a, my favorite odor. Just has a very unique odor to it. Then we have another jackfruit right here. That's doing really good. And then, let's see. We have different, I, don't, I think these are the chilies. They just popped up from the, you buy them in the, at Walmart, the big bag of chilies. And I was using them to deter it, the squirrels. We had a bad issue with squirrels. And these volunteered up, they're doing really good. And we have another one growing. We have another type of goji species growing. This part is starting to put leaves back on. Let's work our way around. I have a small terea tree. It's a very critical endangered tree. It got killed back by blight and people over harvesting throughout the years. First, they would use the wood on the steamboats and they called it go for wood because it's so, so tough. I have a few of them. I planted one on the property. And we have two behind me. I'll show you soon. Here's a papaya. It's growing straight in the ground. Well, I just planted it, so it's not to come back but it just shot up it's the biggest one I have we have some more sour oranges we have some pineapples growing and even have a uh, coffee tree growing it's coming back we have this beautiful flowering plant that has a uh, it's a vine that has a beautiful flower it's up to the M can't think of the name of it I'm Please be a. Thought I still had its little tag. What is your name? If I remember it, I'll say something. I just can't remember it right now. Here's another jackfruit. Grown from seed from Fruit and Spice Park. 
I like how good it's doing. I have another pineapple. It's growing good. There's that casserole bean tree plant. I'm gonna have to plant him. Now we've worked our way to the back area. We have different papayas. Papaya. We even have a, uh, um, a maple tree. Japanese maple. We got a plant. We have different cherapita, the, the Peruvian pepper. That's their famous pepper. Delicious. Got a nice heat to it. We even have another type of aquatica money tree that I got from Fruit and Spice Park from Seed. And then we have we have a cold, cold tolerant guava. It's related to the other tropical guavas, but it broke off the chain. And it lives up in the mountains. Can't remember where. But John, thank John. I can thank John for giving me one. He's such a good guy. You should check out his nursery. He has all kind of good deals. And he even hooked me up with a Chipotle Cava. Check out the trunk of it. I've always wanted one. Can't wait to try the fruit of it. Then we have some different longans. So check this out. Got a lot of longans from the same plant. And these didn't do good, but these did really good. So you can see there's a difference of cold hardiness to the, the plant. And I think I believe I said this in the other video, but longans, one out of 10 are more likely to be tasty. But lychees, you might have to do 100 to get one good one. That's why they do these with air layers. So I wanted to grow some from seed to see which ones would be tasty. And if it's not, I can always graft it maybe. I know they're not, they don't do good from grafting, or I can just cut it down. What do I got to lose? We got a few more of them growing that's doing really good. We have different uh, cayenne still alive. We even have a uh, Trinidad scorpion pepper, really hot. Then we even have a, uh, a giant cayenne pepper that I need to probably bring them in the greenhouse. And these other chili congas are doing good. They're just a little stressed out. They'll come back. They're still making little peppers. And no, I will not try one right now. I've ate a lot of hot stuff this week. Give my tummy a rest. Here's another smaller one. The same one that was in the greenhouse. They just, even though I grew up from C, they have different size fruits. And they also, the way the fruit falls off. We have an elderberry. It's doing good on this backside. Got a few fruits going on. We have a, uh, a, a beautiful fig tree. I love this one, how it tastes. I got a plant it. I did a cutting, or actually air layer from this one below it. So when I get in the ground, they'll start growing, making all kind of yummy fruits. I love it. We have some more with the cherapita. Um, you see, I got a lot of stuff going on. We even have a ice cream bean tree. And the, the fruit, it's a cemetery ice cream. Sweet, a hint of vanilla, I feel like, and real, the fruit tastes like cotton. You have the texture of cotton, but sweet. And you chew on it and it dissolves in your mouth. It does not like this cooler weather. And then I did a little graft on this, this uh, avocado, but this was one of the Mexican ones, the little small seed. And I feel like they don't do that good if you're grafting onto with uh, the Florida ones. But we're gonna find out, I have to ask more information to see if this one takes. But looking at it, that bud is swelling up so it may have it might take we'll find out and I did a side uh, like a veneer or bud graph on the side this is a cleft one I did Let's do it do a lot of them and see what one will take and then we have a uh, have jackfruit grown from seed in the ground it's doing pretty good and right near it, we have a tamarind. It's growing in the ground now. I love plants. I just blows my mind how you could push the edge with these gorgeous trees that no one hears about. Here's a sapodilla. Here's for instance. Check this out. This one has not been protected, but it's protected by the wind and also behind this greenhouse. And also, it don't get tons of sun. It gets filter sun. And it stays a little warmer here behind this greenhouse it, just, it blocks everything but this one did not get bothered at all these I will grow and graft onto them then we have some century plants that I need to plant and get check this out 
These stone plants are very special to me. They, they've been passed down from family to family generations. And my aunt gave me these. And they must have been passed around since 100 or something years. And they're just very unique looking, these little stone plants. I want to keep passing them down and selling to people and tell their story. Good memory. Then we have a uh, chives growing that I grew from the store. You need, believe it or not, you can take them from the store and grow them if they have a, a root ball on it. Put it in the water, regrow them. Then we have my longan. It's doing good. Bought it about a year ago. It's growing, it's put off new growth. I bet you this year it probably make a tons of fruits. I hope you do. Or at least let me try a few. I'll be happy with that. Gotta get hit, gotta get it in the ground. This one would do good here because it we have wet winters. Rainy winters, I mean. And they like it real wet in the winter. Leeches are different. They like more of a drier winter. But they both like to have it cooler at night, like 40s, upper 30s, especially the 40s. And that'll trigger it to make the good fruit. Then we have a papaya. It's growing through the pot. We'll leave it alone. Then we even have a uh, we have a navel plum. You see these down south, and it's got a unique flavor to it. It's not related to plum plums, and it has a beautiful flower to it. And they also have, I mean, a tasty fruit. That's what I've heard. And I wanted to plant a lot of these. I got them from seed. Thought they were papaya because I ordered papaya on eBay and I got these instead. And I'm actually happy about it. So we're gonna grow these here. They'll stay warm in the wind. They'll see. You see, they're they've been touched a little bit by the weather, but I have not protected it, and it's doing good. And I just planted these a few weeks ago. And behind we have a coral bush that I did cuttings from the ones inside the greenhouse. Here's my little our compost tumbler. You just flip it, turn it around. There's all the yummy stuff in there. Go check out the papaya and we'll stop this video. Here's my favorite papaya. Grew from seed and gives us a lot of fruits now. I think it's doing. I'm gonna have to get a frost cloth over it because tomorrow night it's gonna be 30 something. Got a little bit of damage from the cold, but it stays pretty warm here. I think this is the southwest. This side is south. Might be southeast, so I have to make sure. Look at all the new growth. So the most important thing is to keep this top part safe and all these new leaflets. As soon as this gets destroyed, it puts more stress on the plant and it has to put off new shoots. But I love, love this tree. I hope the fruit's gonna be delicious. Love and care it will be. You can see how big the trunk is. And you don't have to worry about planting near the house because they have fibrous roots. It's not like a, a hardwood tree. Kind of like roots like a big old uh, green spinach tree. And then we even have a, um, a little lychee. I grew from seed. It's growing here. You see how he's growing. And then we have comfrey growing here too. So you can always pick up some leaves. Throw them. They take up a lot of nutrition out of the ground. You can feed your plants. And they have a beautiful flower in spring. Or depends where you live at. This is Blake Snatcher Live. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, like, subscribe, and share this video. I like people to see that you can grow anything that you put your mind to. You just think about your microclimate, where you live at, and work with it and learn about your area. Because literally, this spot here, it's like five degrees warmer than a few feet over, or compared in the front yard. To learn what you can grow, that everything's possible. So, learn what you can grow, everything's possible. I'll catch you later.